Good morning, boys and girls. Wherever you are, we want to welcome you to another Kids Connection program. My name is Audrey Zorik, Director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church. Kids Connection is a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. Every week, we bring different programs connecting everyone with each other through our online program and connecting with God with different songs and programs and activities every week in Bible stories. So we hope that you stay tuned for your lesson today as we talk about a difficult word. We're going to be talking about the word called devoted. Whoa, what is devoted? We're going to dig in a little bit more later. But right now, I want to bring your attention to a few things that have been happening in the past couple of Sabbath. Now, as you may know, we are inviting kid to come to our house. That means your house. The kid is coming to your house to say hello to you and your brothers and your sisters or mom and dad. So for the past two Sabbath now, Kid, I've been driving Kid to uh, see and visit a few of the kids from our church. Now, these kids, the parents sent us an email with their address, their name, and we coordinated with mom and dad. And we went out there and we brought Kid to see some of the kids. Now, here's what I want to share with you guys. Some of these visits that Kid paid to you guys last week and the week before. Check this out. Hello, kid. How you doing? I got a kid here that really missed you guys and he wanted to come and see you. Hello, here's Caleb and Elijah saying hello to kid in the middle of the street. Hello, hello, Hansons. How you doing? Camden and Amy. Oh, I got to see you guys. Kid is over here. Hello, Camden. Hi, Camden just took off right now. Kid, hello, kid. Oh, here's, here's kids saying hello to you, Amy. Hi. How's it going? Here's, a, here's Mr. Alex, kid. Did you see that kid? Was that fun or what? That was super fun. So here we are. Hello. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hi. Look at kid coming. Look at kid came by to say hi to you. Hello. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, hello. You look. Even the pup came out to say hi to kid. Oh, look at this. We love the sign. Look at that. From a distance. From a distance. Let's see. It said, "Happy Sabbath, kid." Kid, look at that. That's for you, kid. That's awesome. It was good seeing you guys. We love you. We miss you. We can't wait to have you guys back at at, at church again at Kids Connection. Oh, look at that, Cody. All right, let's step out of the car. And say hello to them. Hello guys, how you doing? Hi, Cody. There you are. Nice to see you guys. How you been? Look at kid, kid. This is awesome. Look at that. He missed you guys so much that we had to come out and see you. And thanks to mom. Hey dad, how's it going back there? Awesome. We had and thanks to mom. She wrote us a, a she sent us a message saying, "You want to see him?" So here he is. Kid missed you so much that he said, I can't wait until this is over. So here we are. Here comes Kid. Kids comes by to see you. Hi, Will. How are you doing? Oh, look at that. Kid misses you, Will. How's Mia? Oh, she's napping inside. That's awesome. There you go. There's a the family right there. Here's Kid right here saying hello to Will. Will. We loved your little note. We read it on Kids Connection today. Did you guys see it? We yeah, we saw that. We saw that you guys are staying active and being and, and being safe. And this is awesome. Yeah, thank you. Look at that. Yes, he's wearing the Kids Connection t-shirt. Making a presence right there. That's, oh, Annalise also has, also has her t-shirt. This is awesome. All right, Annalise, there you are. Hello, hi, how are you? Oh, look at this. You got balloons. Oh, they are so cute. Hi. Oh, here's Kid. Kid came to say hello to you. He misses you. My goodness. You're so big. Look at how tall you are. I can't believe it. Whoa. So here we are. Here we are at the Gomez house. Just being our last visit of the day. How are you guys doing? I see the Kids Connection t-shirt. This is, oh, this is so cool. Whoa, look at that. Oh, that is so cute. 
Yes, I remember seeing that. Yeah. Are you guys having fun watching Kids Connection online? Are you doing all the activities? Yeah, we also want to thank mom and dad because they, and you guys, because every, the entire family is involved in helping out today with the story. That was so cute. Did you like that, kid? That was so cute, wasn't it? Is it another family? Come on, let's see who's out here. Let's see what's up. Oh, look at you guys. Hello, Ariane Bossy. Where is he? Hi. Hello, you guys. How are you? Whoa, look at everybody with the yellow t-shirt. Well, the kids t-shirts. This is lovely. Oh my goodness. You guys are so cute. Look at kid. I wish. Kid says that he wishes he could give you a nice hug right now, but he can't. Oh, he, do you miss kid? Yes. Yeah, kid misses you so much, you have no idea. Every time I see kid, he's always jumping. Is this over? Is this over? Can we see the kids already? And the kids can't. You can't see the kids, but here we go, kid. Here we are, giving you kisses, sending you hugs. That was amazing. I had a lot of fun. Kid was so happy to see these kids and to see moms and dad. He enjoyed the cards. He enjoyed the waves of high. Uh, some of the kids were, were uh, so happy to see Kid that they even decided to sing. Oh my goodness, we can't wait for us to meet together again in Kids Connection so we can have fun with Kid again. Now, according to what I've been hearing, sometime soon we will be able to come together again and worship God here at church, at Vallejo Drive Church, and at Kids Connection. Some of the things are different and are going to be different. We are waiting to see exactly what that's going to be. So as soon as we know what that is, we are going to send an email to mom and dad. We're going to let everybody know what the procedure is and how we're going to do church and and uh how we as 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 people that work at church and all the volunteers that work at church how we're going to approach all this and there's going to be we, we are going to have a different program and different church we are just waiting to see exactly what that is but whatever it is i cannot wait to see you guys close by even if it's just saying hi and sometimes with a mask now i as i went to visit the kids with with kid last week i drove kid around um, it, it was fun just watching the kids even though some people were wearing masks i was wearing masks and and we were all protected to make sure that everyone was safe now again as soon as we know what that is we will let you know we will let mom and dad know how the procedure is going to be and we're looking forward to seeing you guys back at kids connection and vallejo drive church can't wait for that to happen now we are still waiting for some more kids to send us email. Parents, send us an email. VDKidsConnection at gmail.com. VD stands for Believer Drive. VDKidsConnection at gmail.com. Send us your kid's name, your address, your cell phone number so we can contact. And I will drive kid to see your kids and to wave and say hello to your kids just like we did with these with the kids that you just watched um, on, on the video. Now today we have a special program prepared for you but as usual well I'm gonna invite you guys to sing 
our opening song, our song of the day, as we worship God together, connecting with each other and connecting with God. Let's sing our song of the day. Great song, wasn't it? Now I invite you to bow your heads and so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another program. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for being with us. We invite you to worship with us today as we learn more about you. Bless each boy and girl that are watching now at home. Bless mom and dad. Keep us all safe as we worship you together, not only now, but as we go on. Uh, thank you for all the frontliners, people that are working hard to fight this disease. Bless them, keep them safe. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Great. Now, do you guys remember our mission story last week? What happened? This week, we have a different story. And it comes from all the way from Spain. Spain is a far country. People speak Spanish there. Now, there's a group of people that started gathering as a small group, but it didn't stay in this small group. Watch what happened and how we can help this group that started small. Let's watch our mission story for today. On this quiet street in Madrid, Spain, you can hear the inviting sound of worship. The music is coming from this building where the Alcala de Henares Adventist Church meets. Today is a special Sabbath. Some members came to church early to decorate the stage. They're preparing for a special program to celebrate and appreciate the women of this church. It's a bit hard to imagine this small space filled with a hundred people, but as the program is about to start, people come in one by one. Before you know it, the place is so full, some members even have to stand at the back. Five years ago, this church started with only three families. Now, around 100 people come every Sabbath. Most of that growth is because of their young people. 
ha sido un proceso. The number of young people attending grew very fast. Porque empezamos siete chicos. We started with only seven young people, but we dedicated our time to youth ministries. Last year, eight members were baptized, and another six accepted Christ this year. The youth gather in this small room to study the Bible. The bond among them is evident as they sing praises together and study God's Word. We try to be united and be a big family. And of course, we're very thankful that the whole church always keeps us in their prayers. This group finds ways to meet for any occasion throughout the week, not just on Sabbath. This has helped the young people grow closer. They're not afraid to talk about their lives and share their hopes for the future, but they make sure to have fun too. They even started their own youth choir. But as much as young people are welcome in this church, it has presented them with a problem. We have a problem economic very grande. We have a financial problem in the church because almost half of us are young people without income. So we don't have enough money to keep renting this place of worship. This group is praying for God's plan for their congregation. They want to keep growing, and there's no denying the importance of the youth in the church. As youth leader, Oliver is encouraged by what he sees and experiences with the young people. It warms my heart seeing all these young people come to church. Sometimes we go to church on Friday and stay as long as we can until about 11 p.m. On Sabbath, we go to church and stay there the whole day, enjoying worship together. I feel very good when I see this, and it helps me grow spiritually as well. Please pray for the Alcala de Henares Church as they continue to reach out to the young people and everyone in their community. What a wonderful job these people are doing, growing the church and continuing to share the love of Jesus. And they need our prayer in our financial support. So remember to ask mom and dad to click on the link above here, the video on our website, and donate to the missionaries as they continue to, and help them continue to share the love of Jesus. Now, on the beginning of this program, I told you guys that we, were, we are going to learn uh, something about a word called devoted. But before we get to that and to the word devoted, that some of you may know what it is and some may not know what it is. We'll get to that. Let me ask you something. I have a table here. You can't see the table, but I'm going to bring some items to you. And I want you guys to shout out loud, tell mom and dad, tell your siblings or an adult or whoever you're watching this with, if you can guess who uses this. Are you ready? Here we go. Item number one. Here he comes. Aha! What is this? Yes. And who uses this item here? Mmm. Oh, something smells good from, from this. Who uses this? Do you know who uses this? Other than mom and dad? Who uses these tools? If you guessed it, a chef, you are absolutely right. They make good food in these pots and, and they stir and they, as they, as it heats up, all that good smell and good food aroma comes in the room. So chefs use this. Very good. If you guessed it as chef, that's great. Now, I want to show you some, something else. Who guessed? Who can guess who uses this? Aha! Who uses this tool? You know what this is? 
Yes, it is an electric shaver. Who uses this? A barber uses it. Well, some people use it at home too. But a barber, a barber uses professionally. They use this to cut people's hair uh, and trim beards. And, and they have different attachments here that depending on how long you want the hair, it's where you, you, you attach that, that uh, uh, the length and you click on and you trim people's beard. I use this all the time to trim a beard. But if you guess a barber that uses this, you're absolutely right. A barber uses an electric shaver. Now, who uses this? Ha, ah, do you know how to play volleyball? Oh yeah, I love playing volleyball. I used to play volleyball when I was a kid and I played a lot. It was in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, but who does this? A sport player, right? A volleyball player. They use a volleyball to play and some people just make money playing volleyball because they are so good playing volleyball and that's what this is. It's a volleyball player and they are good playing volleyball. All right. Now, I want to show you something else. Who knows what this is? Ha! Ah, some of the boys know what this is. These are tools, right? These are wrenches and what do we use this for? We use this to fix cars. And who fix cars? If you guess a mechanic, you're absolutely right. A mechanic uses these tools as their as his or his or her working tools to fix the cars. And that's how we know who is a mechanic because they know how to use these tools. I use these tools. These are mine. I use it at home because I do my own work in my car. Now, let me show you something else. Who uses this? What is this? It's a paintbrush. And who uses a paintbrush? A painter. Yes, you're right. A painter uses a paintbrush and they use it so much. They use it every day that they are good what they do because they are uh, professionals on painting houses. Now, let me show you something else. Uh, what is this? Do you know what this is? Well, it makes a sound. Check this out. Who uses this? It is a referee. Very good. Excellent. Now, to be a referee, it's not only knowing how to blow this, you need to learn the rules of the game. And they actually go to school to learn the rules because they have to be a fair referee. They need to learn the rules of each game so they can be a good referee. Let me show you something else. Who uses this? Oh, I can't hit this because it will my damage. But who uses this? You know what this is? You know all these tools? Huh? A measuring tape, a hammer, a square. Do you know what this is? It is a carpenter. Very good. A carpenter uses these tools so they can build stuff. So they can build houses. They can build furniture. They can fix things around the house. A carpenter uses this. I like to use these tools at home because I do a lot of projects, especially now with the uh, staying home on Sundays, on holidays, and after work, I am always doing something with my tools at home. Now, let me show you something else. You know what this is? Aha! Check this out. These are brushes. Who uses brushes? These, specifically. It is an artist. Yes, an artist. They also paint, but they use a different type of brush. Not this brush that the painter uses for, which the painter is also an artist, but they do art with these tools. Look at, look at all, how small these brushes are for all the details that the artist uh, uses to uh, to make art. So if you guessed in an artist, really good. Now, who uses 
these tools. You know what this is? Uh, there are some special scissors. You know what kind of scissors they are? I'm going to show you another tool that goes with this. Ready? Aha! What are these tools for? To cut and trim flowers. And this is a rake. A rake to work in. Who uses? A gardener. Yes, my wife loves flowers. And she's always using these little tools to make sure that she takes good care of the flowers and cutting the the bad branches and, and dead flowers out so and then when they fall she uses the rake to make sure that the floor underneath the flower are, are well taken care of so we can they can grow more flowers so a gardener uses these tools so if you guessed it a garden now how about this who uses a stethoscope who does huh and let me see if I can do this yep here we go and oh i'm alive really good my heart is beating <laughs> who uses a doctor or a nurse and they know exactly how to use this tool because that's what they do and they are good at what they do now let me show you something else let me see what what i haven't showed you yet oh yes how about this? You know what this is? This is a recorder. It's a recorder. Now, who uses the recorder? A recorder player, a musician. And they practice and they practice and they practice and they become a good player on on recorder or maybe not only a recorder maybe they play another instrument right a musician plays different instruments but they are good at what they do because they practice they practice that instrument over and over and over again and they become good at what they do now how about this who does this huh who do you do it i know how to do it but i only know how to do it with three some people know how to do it with four with five with six and they keep adding more and more and more they juggle different things and this person is a juggler yes some people work as a juggler and they have fun doing that but can anybody just grab any of these instruments of volleyball or a hammer or or a, a, a paintbrush and start painting and and or or a recorder and just play beautiful music or can you just get get the pot and, and or maybe can you listen to someone's heartbeat and just because you're listening to someone's heartbeat, you are a doctor and you become a doctor just by listening? No. This is what people use on their profession. Now, what does this, all this have to do with our theme of the day, with our lesson today? Well. Remember in the beginning where I told you about a word devoted. Guess what? A volleyball player is devoted to play volleyball. Devoted is someone that is very determined to do something and to become good at that something, whatever they do. Now, a carpenter is good with a hammer and with nails and with the ruler and they know what they do because they are devoted they are very very uh, focused on becoming the best they can at what they do they are committed they are committed to become good at that and to become a professional 
now you have the painter you have the the the, the barber you have uh, the mechanic you have the referee you have the the the, the gardener you have the musician all these people in all in a whole bunch of more I'm just using these as examples people become good at what they do because they are devoted they learn what they do they either go to school they or they do it over and over and over and over again and we know what they do based on how well they use their tools and because of what they do is that we know who they are we know a painter because they're using a paintbrush or a roller or paint we know a mechanic because their hands may not be as clean as my hands because they're always working on the cars and making sure the cars are running but they are devoted on becoming a mechanic and fixing cars in all these professions we know who they are because we see what they do now this has to do with what we are going to learn in our classroom lesson study today you're gonna hear a story about some people that they were devoted remember the word devoted they were devoted to do something and they did it so often that people actually saw it from a distance and they knew what they did. You're going to pay attention to that story and you're going to remember that when you are devoted to something, it shows. They were devoted to God. What did they do to show that they were devoted to God? Just like these people are devoted to what they do, that you know without saying what it is, you know what they do just because of the tools they use. Before we get to that, to your classroom lesson right now, we are going to sing our song of the day one more time. <laughs>
Thank you for singing the song with us. I invite you now to close your eyes, bow your heads, so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much because of what we learned today. Thank you because we learn a little bit more about how to connect with you. And as we listen to the teachers in our classroom now, may you help us understand how these men were devoted to worship you and what they did and help us also to learn how to be devoted in learning and worshiping you. Thank you for being our God and for helping us and for protecting us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Great. Thank you so much for joining us to another Sabbath School Kids Connection program. I invite you guys to join us again next week as we approach a different theme, as we sing different songs, as we learn how to connect with God. Thank you for being there. Thank you for praying for our service. Thank you for allowing us to bring Kid to visit you. We are looking forward to visit some more kids as we receive the uh, the the emails with your address uh, we will come back next week with another program until then i love you guys i miss you guys can't wait to see you again god bless you i'll see you next sabbath bye bye hi kids how are you i'm happy that you're here with us today Guess what? We're at the end of the month. It's the last Sabbath of the month. Yay! So summer is here. We are very short for the summer to begin. I know it's already really sunny in California, but officially summer begins June 21st. That's when the season changes. So technically we're still in spring, but we almost feel the summer here, don't you? Are you enjoying these sunny days? I am for sure, I love summer. So I'm really glad that you guys are also enjoying your summer. What are you guys doing? It was, did you guys had a good week? I hope you did because I've been praying for you guys and I'm very happy to have you here this morning. To start with our lesson, let's have a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, thank you this morning because we know that you are with us. Thank you because you have given us throughout the week many gifts, the sun, a little bit of warm weather, a little bit of flowers, fresh air. There's so many things you have given us and thank you. Please help each one of the kids that are watching us this morning. Please help them so that they know how much you love them. And you know what, God? I can't wait to be with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So welcome back to our lesson. Today, we're going to continue studying about who have we been studying about? Do you remember? Huh, let's see. Huh, did I hear something? Yes. We are going to study about Daniel. We have been studying about Daniel all along and we're almost at the end of studying Daniel. Daniel was such a great character in the Bible. We can learn so many things because the Bible tells us different stories about Daniel right from the moment he was taken to captivity right until his death. So basically, I, I'm not a very uh, particular about dates, but I would say that his life starts being recorded in the Bible around 15 years old. If you have some other information, let me know. But I think um, his life in the Bible started being recorded at life of 15 and then it goes on until he dies. So it's very interesting that we can see different faces, how he was very um, true to God, even when he was very young, and then throughout his life, he continued being true to God. 
And probably that's why God, all it's always present in his life. You know, he saw a lot of blessings throughout the life. So today we're going to start uh, study another lesson about Daniel. Follow along. But I want to ask you a question. So I always like asking you to bring stuff. And I'm sorry if you guys are making a mess. Please always, always, if you take something out, please put it away. Okay? So I'm going to ask you something today. Do you have a favorite sport? Are you a fan of a team? Can you bring something? Bring anything. Bring something uh, that you have from your favorite team. Could be your shirt. It could be a trophy. It could be probably your favorite team is the one that you play for. Um, a cap, I don't know, something, anything. Bring something that will show you that you're a fan. So, in the things that I brought, you know, I don't consider myself a fan because I don't like sports that much, but I've been to some of the Dodgers games. So, in one of the games, look at this. This is Turner, number 10 for the Dodgers. So, there was a, an LA Dodger run and they gave us this one, so I kept it as a souvenir. But this is from the Dodgers. You probably also brought a trophy. Hmm, trophies are really good. Probably you're a fan of yourself. Oh yeah. Well, we all have something we like. What's a fan? You know, fan is actually an American word. And it means fanatic and that's the short version of the word fanatic it's fan and it was created in America so this word as soon as you hear it you know that you love something if you say I'm a fan of Dodgers they know that you're gonna be crazy about the Dodgers if you say I am fan of I don't know White Sox yeah, don't hit me I know, but a lot of you might be fan of some other states, of baseball teams, basketball teams, um, I don't know, anything that you like. And you know, when you know that your team is playing, oh wow, you want to be there, first row, right? Right now, a lot of seasons got canceled, but I'm sure that you want to see them back. You know, just the other day, we were watching the final for the Super Bowl this year's. And while we were, we just watched pieces of it, but, we, but while we were watching it, it's like you remember the game. And it's so interesting because you feel the adrenaline and you're like, yay, cheering for your team and everything. And sports bring that emotion in you. But you know what? Sometimes, when we're a fan of something, we devote so much time that that comes our priority in life. Hmm, so my question would be, I wonder how can we keep a balance of things in life? Do you have an idea? How could we do that? You know, I struggle a lot on keeping balance in my life keeping balance of the amount I spend working, the amount of time I spend doing some other things. How do you find balance? Or let's see what the Bible says about balance. The Bible tells us that if we make God our number one, he will bring peace to our lives. And by giving us peace, he will bring the balance to our daily work. Wow. So there was this king that his name was Belshazzar. It is an interesting name. Belshazzar. He was not a very good king. And he knew who God was. But he didn't take it seriously. He thought God was a joke. 
So one day, he made this big feast for everyone. <gasps> everyone was drinking, they were having a really good time. And in the middle of the party, he said, you know what, this party is not fun enough. I need to know that I'm more than anyone else, that I'm on top of everyone because I'm the king. He wanted to feel he was on the top of the world and he was just the best. There was no one above him. So he said, I know what to do. You know what? When we took those Israelites captive, I remember that we store some precious cups away. Why don't you bring them out? <gasps> you know, do you remember the Ark of the Covenant? Remember how sacred it was? You know, in those times, people knew that anything that belonged to the temple of God was sacred and that you don't want to be touching those things. But this king tried to be smart and he said, no, 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 no. Bring me everything that I'm asking. And I want to be drinking this night from those cups. I can imagine people probably saying, this is going too far. Probably at that moment, it was a wake up call for them and saying, I draw the line here, I'm leaving. It's always okay to draw a line when you see something that it's not right. You know, the king did not think about that. And he requested those cups to be brought to him. When they brought him the cups, he said, now we're gonna have a big, big time drinking from these cups. So the party continued and as everyone was feasting, they realized something. Ah, a writing on the wall. And there was only a hand moving. Everyone was really scared because they couldn't understand the words. Everyone was just puzzled on what to do. The party ended. The music stopped. No one knew what to do. At that moment, the queen said to Belshazzar, Belshazzar, your dad always consulted Daniel. He used to work for your dad. At this time, Daniel was already old. He was no longer working for the king. He had already served eight different kings. Imagine that. But from those eight different kings, only four are listed in the Bible. King Belshazzar thought, probably I'll give it a try. Bring me that Daniel. Let's see how good he is. You know, when Daniel came in, Belshazzar said, I'll give you a deal. I'll give you diamonds, I'll give you gold, and I'll put a purple robe on you. Daniel said, oh king, God does not need your gifts. I can help you, but please do not bring me gifts. I do not need them. Daniel always had very clear in his mind that anything he knew about was always coming from God and that the praise and glory always needed to be for God. So, thing number two that I'm gonna request from you, can you guys bring your Bible? I want you to ring along with me because we're gonna learn some words today. Please bring your Bible and we're going to open our Bibles to Daniel. Daniel chapter five. And we're going to start on verse 24. And let's see what are those words that were written in the wall. It says, Daniel 5, 24. That is why God has sent the hand to write these words. 
मैंने मैंने टैकल ऊपर सी Those sound very difficult words and really hard to understand. So this is what it means. Number number weight division. And this is what it means. Number God has numbered your days of your kingdom and brought it to an end. Weight you have been weighed on the scales and found to be too light. Divisions, your kingdom is divided up and given to the Medes and the Persians. Wow. One decision, one decision that made a difference in the life of Belshazzar. He thought he was the top of the king. He was the on top of the world, he thought. There was no one higher than he was. And God said, this is the end. This needs to stop. You will be removed as a king and your kingdom will be torn apart. That night, the Medes and the Persians walked in they sacked the city and they took over Babylon. You know, this could have ended in a happy story. But Belshazzar took a decision. He made a decision. Every day we're given a new opportunity to make God our priority in our lives. The moment we wake up, it would be very pleasant for God to hear, good morning, God. Thank you for a new day. Thank you because I'm breathing again. Thank you because I get to live one more day. Every day that God gives us, it's a blessing. How are you going to spend your day? It can be a wonderful day with your normal activities. But on your normal activities, invite God to your day. Make God your companion. And you know what? You're going to have the best of your days. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. And thank you for being here with us. We're going to be now doing a little craft. Would you like to join me? Yes, get ready. So for this week's project, we're going to need a piece of paper. We're going to be doing a shape for origami. Okay, so get ready. You would need a white piece of paper. It can be color or if you have a two-sided uh, color paper, that would work. So let's start. We're going to fold in a triangle shape our paper so that way we can have a square we need to have a square shaped paper so we're going to cut the top portion of the paper and we're not going to need this one so after cutting it we're going to open up our paper and we're going to fold the paper in the opposite direction, also forming a triangle shape. It's very important when we're doing origami to press along the edges all the time so your lines are very marked. Now you should have this shape. Now we're going to fold our paper in half. You're gonna do half, and then you're gonna do half, open it up, and also do the half sideways. So open it up. Press, press, press. And this is how it should look like. Once you have it like this, you're gonna take this side and you're gonna fold it to the inside. 
like this. And then your top portion, you're also going to fold it to the inside. So that way we can have this shape. So if you open it up, these two sides come together and see how we had a line on the bottom? So that line, we press it and the middle goes right to the center. And then we press and we're gonna have this shape. Once you have this shape, you're gonna take the corner and you're gonna fold it to the middle. And you're gonna take the other corner, fold it to the middle also. And you're gonna press. You're gonna flip it over and you're gonna take the corner and all the way to the middle and you press. And the other corner to the middle and you press. Now you flip it back. Now we're gonna do another crease because then we're gonna get the middle and we're gonna bring it, I'm sorry, you're gonna bring the corner to the middle and press again. And you're gonna bring the other corner and also you're gonna fold it from the top all the way to the middle. And you press, 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 press. You flip it around and then this corner, you're gonna press it all the way to the middle. And you're gonna press, press, press. And then the other side, you're gonna bring it to the middle. And you're gonna press, press, press. So now everything is pressed. And now, watch out for this step. We're gonna open this side. And when we open it, we're gonna let this side go on the back, see? And then this little corner that you see hanging out, we're gonna tuck it in so that we don't see it. And then we fold back to how it was. Hmm. We're gonna do the same step on the other side. You're gonna open it up and then you see this little corner hanging there? So we're gonna flip it in and we're gonna fold it back. And we press. On the other side, we're gonna do the same thing. We open it up and this little corner that's hanging, we're gonna tuck it in and fold it back. And the next side, we're gonna do the same thing. And we're gonna press it in and fold. Now this corner, we are going to fold it to the inside and we're gonna fold it on the other way also. So are you guys ready? So now you kind of want to open it a little bit and you're going to put some air through the holes. The first time I couldn't do it. So if you need to, you can cut a little bit of the top portion and we're going to blow. Okay, get ready. at this what shape is this one it's like a little pyramid right you take a look at the house it looks like a pyramid you know why I picked this origami craft this morning because in our lives God should always be on the top 
our lives should always be centered in God, with God being at the top and we are always following him. You know, Daniel always followed God throughout his life. And God loves spending time with Daniel. Isn't it amazing that we can spend time with God? Today, we have a brand new day. A day to be joyful and, and a day to give praise to God. How are you going to decide to spend your day? Will you make God your priority? I invite you to, throughout the week, make God your priority. I hope you enjoyed your lesson. Please come back and let's have a word of prayer. Let's pray. Our dear God, we want you to be on the top of our world. We want you to be our priority and we want you to take over our life. Please be with us and thank you because you're always showing us how much you love us throughout our lives. Thank you, God, and we can't wait to see you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I hope you guys had a, a great time, and please come back. I'll see you next week. Bye.